Today, we're gonna to be visiting some of the biggest and best and most expensive koi fish in the region and the country of Germany. Now that's a proper koi facility. Welcome, George, to Japan Koi Service Europe. These are beautiful. Yeah, these are original Tamasaba goldfish. So these are goldfish, but obviously they more closely resemble koi. I mean, they some goldfish that sell for more than ko uh, koi. You're kidding. Yeah, but they're like a football. So these are still knee size, so two years old. Wow. So okay, how much is like a, one of these worth right now? Well, I think they would re retail in a shop for like two, three hundred. These are tosai. Wow. Yeah, and they would get crazy when you get there because they think you're feeding them. I'm bobbing for goldfish. Yeah, I mean, these are beautiful though. Yeah. Oh my gosh. I thought we're coming here to see koi. You got goldfish, you got arowana. Whoa! Normally when I'm here and he's bubbling, that's when he's hungry and thinking I will put some wow. food in. Wow! How big yeah. is this tank? It's like one and a half thousand liters. And these fish are not for sale? Yeah, these are my my private fish. Is this is an Asian arowana? Yes, yes. Golden Asian arowana? Uh, it's a red. In Germany, I would think you maybe find only like five or six for sale maybe in a shop. But this one I got of a, a friend of mine who's got also a wholesale for tropical fish. Uh, he sold it to me. How much is it worth? I would think, well, retail something two, three thousand. What about this pleca? That's like easy a thousand. All right, we haven't even gotten into koi yet. No, just fish. Uh, I know, I'm aquarium just... fish. Wow. Oh my oh. God. These are some big girls. <laughs> These are the biggest girls we have in the shop at the moment. Which is the fish that if you had to sell it, you'd cry? Big mama, her. All right, is that the biggest fish in here? Yes. Wow. That is a big fish. What's the breed? What they what do they call this breed? Uh, Hiyotsuri. Hiyotsuri? Wow, so interesting. This like black and like orange. Like a bumblebee. How many koi fish in total do you have in here? At this moment, about four to five thousand. They're all Japanese koi? All pure Japanese. Nom, 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 nom. That noise. It's the best noise. It's the best noise. So the reason that these koi fish are against the window is because the natural sunlight is super, is good for the fish. It brings out the color in them and makes it richer, a lot like humans. All right, so Matthew's filling up this bowl because we're actually about to get inside the pond and catch one of the koi so we can do an inspection. We're gonna be inspecting it for what? Uh, for parasites. Lock and load. Oh boy. Wow, all the fish are over there. You guys must smell bad. Wow. All right, so we are inside the pond now with Matt, and he's catching Big Mama so we can see her. Wow. <laughs> All right, so what are the three fish that we have? So that's a um, Kohaku, that's a Showa, and that's a Tantio Sanki. All right, let's scrape them. Have you ever done it? I've actually never done that, no. So, you know this? No. Well, this is the base where you put the, the, the sl slime coat, the yeah, yeah. fish slime. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we try to scrape it off to get just a little bit on it, and then we go on the microscope and we have a check. So normally you try to sort of get the fish, and then you just scrape along the skin, and that's where it is. Oh, there it is. It's yeah. like a mucus. Yeah sort of way of getting it. And you just do all three of them, and we just do one check. See? So now you also have a little bit of color, but that's not bad. That would just, it can come off, but it won't damage the fish. Enter the laboratory. So you just go all the way to the middle, so you have it together. You know how it looks? No. See, so just now you have some color. Yeah, I mean, it's interesting. This is what it looks like, whoa. And then if you go along, somewhere here, there's just a normal mucus in the microscope now. I don't see anything moving. Yeah, and that's what you look out for, that something is moving and squiggling around, and that's normally then a, some kind of parasite where you treat against it. Yeah, all clean. So we're parasite-free, so we could, can put them back. See, so you have one here. Number two. And number three. Healthy boys. Yes. That's what a visit to the doctor looks like for the little koi. This is for disinfection our hands. So we gotta, we're gonna go see the rest of the koi. We gotta make sure that uh, we don't carry over anything. Whoa. The rest of the facility, speed round. Just open all of these, yeah, just okay. go one by one. And I just wanna see what's in every single one. Oh wow, well this is the same one as the Big Mama. Younger and fresher version. And very orange, like yeah. very orange. Oh, these are the yellow ones, the Pikachus. Oh, what are the names of these? Yama. The Yamabuki. Yeah. These are Yamabuki. The names of koi is like the coral names. It takes yeah, years yeah. of looking at yeah. them to just even barely yeah. remember the name. Yeah. Oh, wow. Look at these. So the shiny you see ones. the big scales? This is like a very famous breed. It's actually a Deutz fish, but with oversized scales. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is a beautiful fish. Yanni, look at this. Yeah. Look how gold he is. 
Whoa, this is a huge variety. Yes. And these are what, tosai? Wow. And these are also sort of the, 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 the starting fish for many people. These are not very expensive, so it's a fish for everybody. But still, like some very beautiful ones yeah, yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The next big product. Wow. So some of these are the doitsu, right? Yeah. yeah so nice. now the small ones are coming. And these, these will go crazy like later if we feed them. See, so this is full of Hi, smaller babies. fish. Brooke, can you see them? Yeah. But we will feed them and you will go, and all of them will go totally crazy. It's just all orange koi. Yeah, Benny goi. See, it just looks like a goldfish tank. These are butterfly. Yeah, these are the butterfly koi. Yeah. So they got the really long... Fins uh, and everything is long. Even the, yeah. the whisker, how do you say whiskers? These yeah. are long. The high-end koi keepers still say this is not a koi yeah. and they don't want it. But for us, it's one of the most selling fish inside here at the warehouse. Yeah, so this is really cool. What is this? It's Double a, netted or? No, no it's just a net with a, with a zipper. Ready? Yeah. Oh, I got stuck. Oh, no. no. So what are all the fish in here? These are uh, also Nisai, so two-year-old fish uh, from Danichi Koi Farm. From Danichi? Yeah. What about these all black koi? What yeah, that's, are those? That's, that's quite famous. For, Danichi started a few years ago a bloodline called Black Diamond. Uh -huh. And that's the, the offsprings. These are the boxes from Japan, how they get delivered here. You're a koi dealer. Yes. This is the new newest part of the warehouse. So this is like Tosai again, bigger, small fish. Little babies. This is my next project for growing. So these are getting also fed, fed, fed all day long. So that's why they look so really chubby now. This is a new project. Whoa, <laughs> pretty big Scoobies in here. Oh wow, yeah, there's some big ones and they came over here now. Yeah, the, the, the Showa, the black and red white one, I got as a Tosai. Wow, <laughs> look at this. Well, we have the Buddha, an, or another guy here. Yes, he's, he's the god of the pond. That one's my favorite, because it looks like it's got like the black spine. So wow, I love that fish too. Yeah. Mm, I want him. Well, if oh, it were dude, these are beautiful. So when, when Matthew was building one of these koi ponds, uh, he almost cut off his toe because he was using like a saw of some sort, and the shoe, you still have it. It's hanging on the wall. Yeah, and that's the actual uh, disc which was on there. You know, in America, we hang up like jerseys or things that are like good memories. <laughs> you almost cut off your foot just in trying in an attempt to build a, a koi a fish pond. pond. Yeah. These are my certificates from my those fish we looked at before. These are the breeder certificates. So does every fish get one of these? Every higher quality fish. A little German snack. I, I invite you now to eat. It's rude if you don't eat it. Uh, so now we just walk along and feed them if you want. So now when I close this one, the, the next ones will know and then they just sort of see, but they're all waiting now. Look at the way they're spiraling. That's insane. What's the total water volume? In Roughly here? all tanks together about 160,000 liters. 160,000 liters. Which ones were, did you have to feed still? <laughs> Number four. But these will go really nuts. Whoa. Look at this. Oh, so cool. What do you think? Nice to like walk down the street and not see a Starbucks, you know? Good morning, everybody. We are leaving Nuremberg today and we're heading to Munich. We're taking the train. It takes about two hours. We're going south. And we are trying to find the train station so we can catch this train. Wait, wait for me, wait for me. It's risky, but we could try and catch a cab going that way, but I don't know if it's that smart. Catch this cab. We need to go to the train station. Okay, do you take card, visa? There you go. Do the trains leave late here? I hope they do. The train leaves officially at 9.09. .09. So it's about 10 minutes from now. All right, we're here at the train station. Yeah. Here he goes. All right. You know, I think it's 12. I 12. have no idea. 23. Yeah, it's on 12. 12. 12. Best way to get around Europe is the train. It's super fast, it's really cheap. Straight from one city to the next. <laughs> We thought we lost you there. It was a close one. We're in a park here in Munich. It's really cool. Basically, there is like this, uh, I don't even know what you would call it. The river is coming and it creates this wave and all these surfer dudes. Look at this. Whoa. Wipe out. We 
are currently driving on the Autobahn. My first time driving a manual car. Can you believe it? I spent like a couple hours in a parking garage this morning learning how to drive manual. I didn't think I was gonna figure it out. Like for it was the first few stalls that I did, I thought there's no way I'm getting out of here. I'm probably gonna have to turn this car. But yeah, they only had manual, no automatic cars. And here we are. Right now we're on our way to the next location, which is the New Schweinstein Castle. I'm not really sure how to pronounce it. That's my best guess. New Schweinstein Castle. Supposedly, it's one of the top things to do in all of Germany. I never realized Germany is so green, but like look at all the trees. It almost just feels like you're driving through Michigan or something. And that's our first stall. That's what I'm saying. Starting and stopping is like the hardest right, part. Now clutch again and then go. It's fine. Is it left? Back. All right, now clutch in your two. Hit it and go clutch two. Hit it straight back. All right, now go. I'm taking my first Asfar. Asfar. Holy schnitzel. That is beautiful. When I die, bury me here. Holy schnitzel. Holy schnitzel. We're on the border of Germany and Switzerland right now. And you can see the Swiss Alps, the big mountains, the ice caps in the background. That's so cool. A lot of very. Angry drivers behind George today. A lot of angry people, but also a lot of patient Germans. I'd say just as many have been super patient as they have been angry. Turn left on the Schwangauer Strasse, then you will arrive at your destination. Look at the cash in it. Alright. What do you think, Yanni? I feel like a Disney princess right now. Wow. Probably where I just set up shop, spend the rest of my life. It's right here. Just eat grass. Don't know what more I would need. This is it, man. Yeah, so I guess Walt Disney saw this and it was inspired to make, you know, the Disney screen you see before every Disney film? That's it. That's where it got its inspiration, from that castle right there. Dude, this is crazy. There are people in the castle, so you can get tickets to go inside of the castle but you're not gonna get this view. Me and George probably hiked two hours up this mountain, and now we're basically just hanging on the edge right here. The princess should be right there. Problem is, there's a dragon that needs to be slayed. I'll take care of it. We gotta slay the dragon, save the princess, say what's up to Lord Farquaad. <laughs> All right, so I learned how to drive stick. Yanni, it's your turn. You serious? Yeah, dude, this is a parking lot. There's not really a better place for you to learn. Oh man, you better put your seatbelt on, it's gonna get pretty rough. Yo, the car is still moving. The car is still moving. The parking brake on. Parking brake. Okay. Ow. Oh, you gotta go slow. Off the brake. Okay. Off the clutch. Now. Oh, Very God. slow, yes, yes. <laughs> keep going, keep going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah! Let's go! Bros. Bros. Another safe driver makes it away.